So what you what you worked out was, I think, that you were going to try to exploit that or that ability of the spinal cord to do what it needs to do without the brain. You were able to stimulate the spinal right. cord to do what it needs to do naturally. Yeah. So the obvious question then is, to what extent can humans take advantage of this? What I find so exciting to work with you, what just for me is so humbling really, is the fact that you were taking on mainstream thinking in science at a time where we were being taught the spinal cord is really directed by the brain, the spinal cord was not thought to have its own capacity. You were thinking differently to the rest of the scientific community worldwide. And I gather from what you told me in the past, not everyone was exactly believing your way of thinking or thinking that it would be possible to recover from spinal cord injury. Certainly I never thought in my scientific career we could achieve what you're achieving. It's, it's been unbelievable. Well, I think it's safe to say that everyone didn't buy onto this idea. <laughs> and there's still non-believers, which is the way science goes. So uh, that's, that's what, what you have to expect. I feel that the results actually have come out to be more significant than I, what I had uh, anticipated. We thought uh, our initial target was to have people uh, walking. And uh, we thought that would be the easiest one to, to accomplish. And, but we found out that actually wasn't so easy. Uh, but the real surprise was when the individuals regained voluntary control of their uh, limbs and they were able to move. We were, we, we felt kind of silly at that point because we had not done any control experiments to even test whether they were going to regain voluntary control. So it happened very unexpectedly. And um, there that changed uh, everything. I grew up in a very physically active family. My parents actually ran marathons for fun. So my brother and I actually grew up camping, uh, hiking, swimming, so I was pretty active at the time of my accident. But I had suffered a spinal cord injury. I didn't really know what that meant other than the fact that it was really bad. They couldn't really move my hands, so I knew something was wrong. Um, uh, I didn't know what the future would be, but I knew it wouldn't be what it was before. Right? It dramatically changed. Even if I did recover, it wouldn't be the same. I always say I was like a wet noodle. I had like no muscle tone. I had a hard time sitting up. Um, I had a different wheelchair at the time, but it was also manual and I really couldn't push myself at all. I felt really tired just even sitting up. Um, it was pretty rough. I thought, wow, I don't know if I could live in this body. It was a stark contrast to what my life was like before. Now we've seen the un unexpected event uh, of each of these individuals that have been paralyzed for, for years, mm. they're regaining voluntary control. It's unbelievable. So now the, the issue is how do we get the brain and the spinal cord talking to each other? And so that's another new thing. We have no idea what the brain is doing to figure this out because the connection that is between the brain and the spinal cord, that connection can't be the original connection. Now, the spinal cord is learning. And most people think of learning just in the brain. But now we know that learning is occurring in the spinal cord. And so that made us realize, well, that uh, gives us a lot of potential to work with. After using the simulation to go ahead and you know open water bottles, or if you think like, mm, you know, jars of jam, uh, open doorways with my left hand, um, hold a fork a lot easier. Uh, just little things that you really don't think about when you're able-bodied. But, you know, when you have a disability, especially when you have quadriplegia, it really makes a big difference in your life. I think it's fantastic. I mean, because currently there's really no treatment for spinal cord injury. Uh, the rehabilitation tools that I used when I was in rehab were pretty archaic. Right, you learn to roll around, you learn to sit up, maybe put on your clothes if you can, and that's it. Like maybe you, you know, they stick, you know, one of those TENS units on your arms to stimulate your muscles, but that only really goes so far and it kind of burns, you know, the amount of stim you need to create movement is a lot more than what we use now. So um, I feel like it's really the future.
exciting to see you know, what the future holds in terms of this technology. Um, I hope that more people can use it, and hopefully one day I can take it home. Hello, I'm Charles Woolley. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.